I think this is an important topic. This is a, you know, besides, besides repentance and following Jesus, marriage and, you know, having a relationship with somebody of the opposite sex is probably, I think everybody would agree, one of the most impactful things in our life. I mean, it's just, it changes your life completely. It's the second most important question uh, in our life. And you want to get it right. You want to do it right. Uh, and you want to do it for God's glory. So all that being said, guys, uh, feel free to text your questions in, uh, you know, uh, send them into the bit.ly if you'd like. And um, that being said, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Peter K. And I've been married for two and a half years. It feels like it's been Two days. I mean, it's just so quick. Time is just flying. Uh, my wife is amazing. She's an angel, and I don't deserve her. So, uh, David. So I'm David. That's it. And my name is Paul, or Pasha, but I'm married 25 years this year. So um, we got nothing on him. Yeah, so all the questions here, guys. <laughs> and uh, how's it going, guys? My name's Khan. Um, I'm single, so I'm guessing I'm so representing no the single people for here. This yeah. Yeah. Whatever I say, obviously, I don't know what I'm talking about, so just ignore me. Um, but I am going to use this time to actually plug my community group because I just started mine two weeks ago. So hey, and we're bro, talking about community no. groups. If you're ready to mingle. <laughs> so um, on Thursdays, 6.30 p.m., if you're in ninth or 10th grade, come through, find me afterwards, or find Yuri Matushka, and uh, we'd love to have you guys join, ninth and 10th graders. Yeah, we're joking. He, know, he knew a lot about relationships. So. <laughs> He's a vet. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, all right, so let's uh, let's look at uh, let's look at some questions that we have uh, sent in. First question is: What do guys look for in girls? So, what do guys? And I'm, I'm assuming this is Christian men. What do uh, Christian men look for in girls? So, anybody want to take that one away? For I'm married. No, I'm not looking for a girl. <laughs> Hypothetically. Come, this is a question for you, this bro. This is me? <laughs> um, they wait for question. your answer, bro. There you go. All right. Um, for me, what I'm looking for in a woman is um, someone to pretty much make me a better guy. So I want my future wife to be my support because if we become one when we're married. We become one person. And I, when I stumble, when I struggle, when I am going through a tough time, I want someone to be able to encourage me spiritually, mentally, emotionally. But at the same time, I want to be able to do that for her. And I want us to be able to work as a team to grow and to be able to serve God together as one unit. That's my biggest thing. She has to love and, I mean, I work with teens, so she has to also um, love teens because that's not going to work. But, yeah. Love you and everything what you love. Well, there's compromise, obviously, but. Okay. Um, what about if you're going to love what she loves? Yeah, yeah of course. <laughs> no, it's, as long as she loves teens. <laughs> that's what marriage, huh? Mar well, yeah. Um, yeah, it's compromise. It's, for someone once told me that marriage is the most unselfish or unselfish thing you can do because it's a lot of sacrifice, it's a lot of um, compromise, it's a lot of just making things work and making sure it works. So I'm definitely going to have some of that. Uh, when, when I was single, back in, back in the old days. <laughs> back in two years. <laughs> back two years ago. Uh, you know, I, growing up, I seen couples and couples that where one person was born again and the other person was not. 
and it was it was crazy because you see that you know you can't you can't relate um, the the person the people can't relate to each other because one has the spirit of God living in them and the other person has the spirit of the world and it's just God is the number one right God is everything if you are a believer if you've been born again and if you can't connect on the most important thing then nothing else really matters you know what I mean it's like it um, it uh, I can't think of a good analogy right now, but it, it, it's like you get all these other things. Hey, you know, you're dressed well, you're fed well. What more could you possibly ask for? But if the most important thing, that, that love for God is not there, then, then nothing is there. And, and just as a, growing up, you know, I, was, I started praying. I'm like, God, I, want to, I just want to marry someone who really, really loves you. And it's crazy because... Um, I've seen that in my wife and Vera, and I started praying about that. And and right now, I mean, it's been two two and a half years, and it's I literally feel like the luckiest guy in the world. I mean, not even the luckiest, the most blessed guy in the world because she loves God, and it just solves so many different problems in our marriage because God is first. And you know, it's interesting because I think it's connected to what's the first commandment, guys? Love God. Do you realize that God's not forcing us to do that because he just is like selfish and he just wants us to love him? He says, you shall live by these commandments. These commandments give you life. So loving God is the source of life for us. And when both people love God, you're not going to have a, a whole bunch of problems because you're putting God first. So I would say... Of course, there's factors like, you know, there's the visual factor, men being visual, that plays a factor. Absolutely. You know, I'm not saying like I was this, you know, super spiritual monk and, you know, just, you know, meditating and praying and then like, you know, God gave me a vision. But all those things are in place. But I would say the number one thing that uh, a godly guy is looking for or should be looking for is, hey, does she really love God? Is she born again? Is she passionate about Jesus? So, so yeah. Let me yeah, go ahead. Well, see, the thing is, it depends on the guy, honestly. If the guy is Christian, he will look on the heart of the girl that he's looking at. If the guy is not Christian, he will look at the, all other different things in the girl. The way she walks the way she talks, the way she dresses, and all other stuff. So it depends on the person itself who is looking at the woman. I would say, like Peter, he's a Christian. That's why he was looking uh, and trying to find the wife that godly and loves God at the first place. And so uh, first for the guys, start in your heart. Then you find the right woman. And some practical stuff for girls. We as a guys, as a man, me as a man, I wanted somebody to obey me. You know, this is how God created us. He was um, telling the Jesus, he obeyed God. Me as a man, I should obey Jesus and my wife should obey me. That's why we're looking for some girls, uh, for a girl like me. When I was looking for a girl, I was looking for a girl who could not cannot do everything you know some girls acting like they they don't need anything they can do everything by themselves oh I'm, so just show the guy that you need his um i don't know spiritual uh, wisdom and um, don't act like you can do everything you not he wasn't created for that he was created to obey your husband so if you want a uh, spiritual guy look at you just be it to God, to Jesus, disobey to Jesus, and basically be humble. That's the more most important thing. Be humble. This is your your most um, strongest. Uh, I don't know how is it to tell it. The strongest arujia, whatever. Yeah, in your hands. Because когда мы смотрим на девчонок, мы хотим видеть в них что-то беззащитное. 
Знаете, что-то, что надо защитить. That's how man created. Awesome. Uh, here's an interesting question. Does the guy pick the girl or does the girl pick the guy? <laughs> Go ahead, guys. Well, usually it's a guy, right? I don't know. Not usually, for sure. This for is sure, the only right? way, girls. Well, don't well, don't take their responsibility on you. This is the guy. This is the, the guy has this uh, wisdom from God, and this is his responsibility to choose a girl. Well, the guy is choosing, but the, his answers belong to a girl. So before the marriage, it's all about her, and it's all, all about uh, up to her. But of course, the guy should come up to a lady and ask for hand and marriage. And, but uh, ladies, it's all in your hand, actually. And you know what's interesting is, I guess this is a question of initiation, right? Who initiates? And ladies, I think, I think it, would do, it would do you good if he is the one that initiates the relationship, right? Because you want him to lead. You want to support him. You want to enable him to lead because if he's going to start off the relationship, and this is the beginning of the relationship, right? If, if he's the one initiating that, that means he's going to start leading, you know, throughout the rest of your relationship, leading financially, leading, you know, in your family, leading through work, leading spiritually. You want that because that God designed us for that. It says that the... the, the and I know this is totally controversial with what society and the culture is saying today, but it says that the husband is the head of the wife. That means the leader of the wife. This is in no way to diminish the value of the wife. It's just saying positionally, here's, here's how God designed it, and here's how everybody's going to be happy. You know, so is it okay for a girl to, you know, maybe take a step to perhaps be noticed? I don't think that's wrong, right? Uh, but but you want him to initiate that because it's going to set the tone of the relationship moving forward. If you're the one, like, taking him, you know, by the hand, hey, let's go, you know, you're marrying me and all of that, well, then you're just going to be dragging him along your entire marriage. You're going to say, hey, you go get a job. Hey, you go do this. Hey, you do that. And you're going to be the one wearing the pants. You don't want to wear the pants, you know. You want him to wear the pants. <laughs> No jokes. <laughs> yeah. So d does that make sense, guys? It's, it's, it's how you set the tone. You know, like when you start off your morning and, you know, you do something that's out of routine and your whole morning is off and your whole, actually whole, whole day is off. It's the same thing, it's the same thing with, with your relationship, you know? Uh, let me add to that as well. Uh, like Peter said, uh, uh, the, the boy should be a leader, not, not the boss of the wife uh, they should the, the boy sh or husband should lead not dominion over uh, her his wife so it's totally different you know but if lady wants to propose to a boy she's trying to overcome that uh, situation and lead him in that sense so and I just want to clear this out that the uh, boy is leading or husband is leading wife uh, not bossing her around that's the I just want to just throw that out there and just make yeah. it clear amen uh, an, an interesting question is being jealous for your spouse or you know boyfriend uh, or husband I mean uh, spouse boyfriend girlfriend significant other is it healthy and to what extent before it harms your relationship? Um, I, <laughs> again, um, might not be the right answer because I haven't been in a very long-term relationship like some of these guys, 25 years. But I have a lot of friends that are married and I have a lot of friends, I've, I, my parents and everything else, that I've seen relationships. I personally don't think that jealousy is healthy. Because it's a lack of trust. When you go into a relationship, you're supposed to trust your significant other. You're supposed to trust that they're going to stay faithful to you. And this is, 
it's hard because you're being vulnerable, but that's also what you're doing in a relationship. You're giving your, your vulnerability up to someone else so they can support you. And if you're not able to trust the other person, then that talks a lot about where you're at in your relationship. And I don't think that's healthy to be jealous. And I know. Are you sure you've never been in a relationship before? <laughs> <laughs> not a long time, no. <laughs> no, it's, I totally agree with on, on that. And uh, me and my wife, we have this trust. We don't have jealousy in my marriage, honestly. We don't have it. And um, she, if you look at my hand, there is no ring. Ooh. Yeah, right? <laughs> man, are you even a Christian? <laughs> That's good that we don't have a live stream, right? Yeah, right? <laughs> so uh, the reason being, first of all, I work with, with my hands. I almost rip my uh, finger off at once. But beside the point, I don't wear a ring not because, you know, it's remind me that I'm married. I, I have a ring on my heart, in my, man, my, my mind. Whatever I go, I know there is my wife, first of all. I know there's a God who I trust and who I love. That's the first commandment, like we already talked about. It. That's the first thing. Wherever I go, I know that I am married man. And same way on, on her part. She trusted me fully. She um, used to work at the uh, U.S. Bank right here, and she had a lady... Um, who was an unchristian, and she always checking her phone and uh, trying to find out where her boyfriend are, always. Oh, and if she, if she didn't get the text from him, then she's thinking that he, he's with somebody else. It's like, are you kidding me? It's not the life of marriage or, you know, this is, it, it's not relationship. This is just, you know, you're always trying to, in the back of your mind, you're thinking about that person, that that person will cheat on you or something. This is not marriage. Marriage is supposed to be 100% in trust, trust in each other. And when you trust each other, you don't have this jealousy. For sure. But you see the ring on my hand. That's why <laughs> you can't tell the... It comes with the years and years of marriage. I'm joking. Um, in my experience, um, I want to tell you for sure, I'm not accept any um, jealousy uh, from my wife because I'm telling her, hey, I trust you. Why don't you trust me? Uh, and I think, honestly, and I think well, you can prove it, that that comes with the years of marriage, with the experience of marriage. Because in the beginning, when you're just in a relationship, uh, that might happen. Might happen, and I think you should just act as a Christian because you will struggle with that. Because if when you love someone, you like you want you want this person to be just with you. You're so selfish in that, and that might happen. Um, I don't think that's bad, bad, but you should learn how to avoid that. You should learn because by the time you will be married, that should not be in your marriage. In the relationships, that might happen, but that, this is the thing that you have to work on, okay? And uh, um, I don't know, I trust my wife and I agree completely with you that there's nothing to do with my marriage. Jealousy is, is nothing to do with my marriage. Well, uh, I just wanna add one more thing. Uh, when when person is too jealous of the other, it's ruining the uh, marriage. A lot of marriage is ruined by uh, jealousy. And another thing, um, if husband is extremely jealous, some of, some of the wives never leave home. They, they cannot enjoy company of her husband because he's always on her case looking for something. This is not even marriage, this is, it's not a life. She always needs to watch out what she said, where she look, what she going to, who she going with. So it's like a, slavery. It's exactly it's a slavery than, than marriage. Marriage is supposed to be two persons love each other and trust each other. Well, you know what's interesting is you know what passage comes to my mind. It says, uh, "For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God." 
right? You're like, whoa, so is, is that bad? Like that God is jealous? And I want to make this distinction for a second. When God says he's jealous, he said that when the Israelites were literally cheating on him with other gods, when they were worshiping other gods. So as spouses, right, if something, God forbid, were to happen like that in terms of marital unfaithfulness, jealousy would be an appropriate response because you love the person, you want that. I think what we're talking about is Selfish, the, selfishness. the jealousy of where nothing happened, but you're paranoid and you're not trusting the other person and it's just ruining your relationship. You know, hey, where are you going? What are you doing? What's this? Who are you texting? Blah, blah, blah. What that stems from is, again, not trusting the other person and ultimately not trusting God, right? Because we love, it, it's this, do you realize that jealousy in a way is a self-defense mechanism? Uh, because you, you're afraid of being hurt, so what do you do? You start to expect it. So you're like, well, maybe he's cheating on me. Because the worst thing is when it's unexpected, right? Pfft, that, I mean, that's the most painful experience. So you learn to, so you start expecting it all the time. You start looking for it. Well, it's a great self-defense tactic, but it starts ruining the marriage, and it can become slavery. It could just, it's just nagging. It's annoying, and uh, it, it's funny because it could become a self-fulfilling prophecy. Uh, of its own. And so. I just thought one more thing is, I just imagine myself if I jealous all the time, it, I, I wouldn't have normal life. Yeah. It, 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 I become a slave to that, uh, you know, circumstances. It's, it's it just for yourself as well, it's, it's not healthy. And um, I'm also going to add one more thing. Um, oftentimes, at least what I'm seeing from other people is when there is jealousy in someone's life and it doesn't come from an actual cause, usually that is that person holding on to either a past relationship where they got hurt or um, parents, something that they saw with their parents or something that they saw with their friends, and they're just trying to protect themselves, and they're not giving their spouse a fair chance anymore because they're so closed off, and that's, again, hurting their relationship. But it's, if you're feeling that jealousy when you're with someone, they have no, you have no reason to feel jealous. Look into your own life and to kind of past experiences, and are you trying to block yourself off and protect yourself while at the same time actually hurting your relationship. Be careful with those reasons because, you know, for somebody, the reason to be jealous is just your boyfriend talking to somebody, of course. So just be Christian about it. Don't, like, if you love somebody, trust him. You should talk about it, honestly. If you feel like, wow, actually girls, they're really, like, they're really uh, selfish in that. So they want to, if, if they see a guy talking to other girl, they're crazy about it, you know. And uh, <clears throat> you should talk. You as a girl, you should came, come up to your, like, future husband and tell him, hey, you know what? I don't like it. I don't know what's going on with my heart, but I don't like it. Can you please do not do that? And the boy, he should respect that. He should tell you, yes, for sure, I will change. So talk about it. Don't leave it. Okay. Uh, the next question, uh, I could just hear the discouragement in, uh, in this question. Um, it's, why are girls so irritating? And I promise you that in a couple of years, they won't be. They'll change. I promise you that. So, uh, No, but uh, all, all jokes aside, um, the next question is, um, what is the proper age to marry a girl? What is the proper age? What's the right age? Возраст. 45. <laughs> There is no right age, guys. It's all about your relationship with God. It's, it's all about your spiritual life. Well, it's not 12, for sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, uh, I think you will understand that. You will understand. For me, that was clear. One day... I need to find a wife. One day, it was like click in my mind. Boom. Is it morning or evening? Yeah, it was <laughs> morning, <laughs> Monday. After breakfast. <laughs> Monday, Monday morning, morning. 7.55. <laughs> I can't eat these Pop-Tarts anymore. <laughs> yeah, so that was pretty clear for me that I was ready for that. Guys, please do not do mistakes. You will feel that when you're ready for that. And for me, uh, 
that was I was spiritual, uh, spiritual. I was having a good relationship with God, so my spiritual um, growth was in progress, and uh, my financial uh, my financial situation was stable. So, and I just was thinking, okay, so what's my next step? It's marriage, and I was just going to find a wife and marry her. That that will happen with me. So I think. For sure, when you uh, pass teen, teen, teenager age, like teens, yeah, because you know, in 16, 17, everything. What about 19? It's hard to hard to tell. For some boys, it's okay. For some, not. Well, it, I got married at 19, so <laughs> <laughs> it worked. That's that's how we know so that that's not. No, I, I completely agree. It's about uh, your relationship with God. We're talking about Christian people, okay? Let's let's be clear on that. If you uh, know your where you're going in your life, first of all, um, of course, uh, like I said in the beginning, it's not 15, 12, 13, 16, uh, but I was 19 years old when I got married, and people was telling me that I'm too young, it's too early, and uh, some even said that, you know, um, most, uh, thank you, most relationship who got married early uh, end up divorcing. Uh, I don't know where they got that statistic. Uh, do you know 50% of statistics are made up on the spot? Oh, really? Maybe that's what it happened in there. But By smart people? See, but I know, I knew in my heart, when I uh, was ready, I knew in my heart that when I'm getting married, it's forever. It doesn't matter what comes my way. It's forever. And I'm trying to say right now to you, you are not married yet. You are maybe, some of you may be dating but some of you may be thinking about it. But lo let me tell you this. It's forever. Before you say I do or before you propose to that girl, think about it. Do you want to spend your life with that woman for the rest of your life? You need to think about it. Because people doesn't think about that as, as, as often. They just want to get married. For what reason? They don't know. And uh, he was uh, financially stable, you said, right? I wasn't. I was uh, working in grocery outlet. <laughs> I was making 4.25 an hour <laughs> per hour. Long. So it's, it was a long time ago, like I said, 25 years ago. But I knew in my heart, no matter how, whatever it comes my way, I will get through it. And we, we will get through it together. No matter what happened. I knew from day one that when I get married, I will find a job. I will support my wife. And since that day, I, when I get married, I always, always God came through. He gave me wisdom. He gave me enough strength to work. I always work physically. I never work in the office anywhere. So it's about yourself when you actually inside of yourself ready ready for marriage, ready for that relationship, ready to live with that woman for the rest of your life. Yeah, all right. Um, I'm going to add to that, too. And um, Are you ready? I'm, <laughs> um, ready. I'm getting there. Join this group. So I, uh, I, I had my first, like, high school sweetheart, my first relationship when I was 13. I thought I was going to marry this girl. We dated for four years, and that was the fact that I didn't marry her was probably the best thing that I did. And it's the exact opposite of what Paul was just saying. But the reason why I'm saying that is not because the girl was bad. She's a lovely girl, amazing. But I wasn't ready myself. I was told, and I'm pretty sure I'm quoting someone else, that there's five things that you need to have before you get married. And those are, you need to be financially there. You need to be spiritually uh, there. You need to be emotionally there. You need to be uh, physically there. What's the fifth one? I don't know what you're talking about, bro. <laughs> Well, you uh, just made them for yourself or what? <laughs> no, there, there, I heard it, there was, it was part of a sermon, but you need, to, you need to be ready yourself. You need to know that you can lead this woman the rest of your life. Like Paul was saying, this is for the rest of your life. And I know when I was 18, I, wouldn't, I wasn't able to take care of myself, let alone another person. Um, but you got to know where you're at honestly with God 
and with yourself before you go into a relationship and start leading someone else. Guys, I actually want to share something to the guys. Um, and this blew my mind when I heard it. Um, and I, I, I believe it was at a camp and we went to an overnight hike and Minikov was uh, sharing. And he basically said, you know, so, you know, you go to youth together and then, you know, she, you like this girl and she asks you for a ride home, right? And so you give her a ride home and, you know, you're just, you, you know, you, you're, you know, we're cool, right? I and mean, we, we want to show how cool we are. So, you know, you kind of race and you drive, you know, weave through the cars, through the traffic and, you know, you know, bring her home and, and you drop her off and you, you did that. And you think that you prove to her how cool you are, but you know what she's thinking in her mind? What she's really thinking is, I want to stay away from this idiot because he is going to kill me and my kids if I ever marry him. Literally, that's what they're thinking. Because girls, for girl, I mean, this just as I grew and matured. It's mind-boggling how important security, safety, and stability are to girls. That's I mean, what I was telling them. Girls, I mean, is that true or is that not true? Okay, there you go. Thank you. Security, safety, and stability. God created them from the rib, right? To be, to be under, to be protected. Notice, it's not the women protecting the men. <laughs> It's the men protecting the women. And just, I know it's really hard to like comprehend this and to understand what their cravings are, but they are totally different. I mean, they're literally from a different planet, right? It's just from Venus, we're from Mars. And, and they are totally different. And what they're looking for is totally different. And the little dumb things that you do to try to impress them are not impressing them. Um, and you need to be ready to, like they were saying, provide and to actually provide that stability and take care of her. And like Paul was saying, make that commitment in your heart that, hey, this is forever. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take care of her and I'm going to give my life for her if I need to. So drive slowly, make all stop signs. <laughs> yes. And you will Open your it. door on the uh, railroad, you know. <laughs> uh, okay. Is uh, our long distance online relationships wrong? That's the best. <laughs> <laughs> Physically, you like, cannot touch that person. <laughs> That's the best relationship ever. My brother was dating like that. She was in Germany. He, he was in Russia. Five years. Wow. Only letters back and forth. Wow. Until, until we got to America. So, yeah, it's... Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't think it's wrong. That was after World War II, right? Yeah, <laughs> long time ago. <laughs> Honestly, I think, <laughs> I don't have the experience. How can I tell it? It's, for me, it's weird, honestly. But I don't know. I see some people who meet each other on the internet, get married, and it's pretty well, good. What are, you, what are you gonna do if the person can, can't come to America or Something, you know... Just find somebody in America. <laughs> well, <laughs> like, 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 for example, like, again, my brother, that, right? We, uh, he's leaving to army. And he dating with someone. When the army back then, in two years in Russia, you have to serve. It's not like if you want to or not, but you, they make you go. So he went for two years in the army. Uh, in those two years, this family, that the, the girl that he dated, they moved to Germany. So they moved to Germany. Now my brother came home, come home from army. We moved to America. So they didn't see each other for five years. In that situation, I, I don't see anything pro any problem with that. It, it's uh, and it's not dating. It's just you know. It, actually, you know what? It's it's um, helping your relationship, I think. You trust him, and he is trusting you that you, you, you know, you're faithful to that person uh, through whatever time you are actually dating, through online, whatever. Um, I want to make sure we understand what we're talking about here when we're talking about when we're answering this question right here. Because what Paul and David just said is about 
hey, you know who this person is, and right, let's say I met someone, I'm, they live in a different country, and I know that this is the person I want to marry and spend the rest of my life with. But for some reason, they're, they have to be in a different country for a year or five years, whatever it is, and you're just communicating until you can get back together. I don't think that that's wrong, and I think we all agree with that. But what I want to be very clear on, and I think this is more of where this question is coming from, is Tinder, all these other things, that's not what we're talking about. That's a no, because we all know what those apps are kind of used for, and you can make a very, you can make yourself a whole different person when you're talking over for text or whatever, and I'm sure that a lot of you guys even realize that once you actually met up with someone in person, that person's completely different. And that's a very, very, very dangerous way to try to find someone because you don't know who they actually are. You don't know if they actually know who Christ is. You don't know if what they're saying is complete lies, pretty much. And um, I mean, I get that's how people talk now and you meet people through the internet, but it's a lot, at least for me, I guess I'm kind of old school still, but. Well, in, in that case, I don't know why you want to go that route. If you have church and you have, uh basically all the people around you, why you want to go that route? That's the first question I would ask. Yeah, guys, what it comes down to is why are you seeking to establish this relationship with this person far away, right? It, it's, is it because God is calling you to that? You've been praying about it and God's calling you to that and he's put on your heart? Or is it just your passions? Seriously, ask yourself. Am I just lusting after this person? And you know what? You guys heard that saying, the grass is greener on the other side? You guys heard that before? Well, now you heard it. Now, the, you know, it, you're like, ugh, I, I already know everybody at Bright Youth. I already know everybody at Bright Church. You know, these are, they're like my sisters. They're like my that's brothers. A, that's you know? actually a really good thing that you know everybody. Yeah, it actually is. And, and, you, and we always want something new, you know? We want to go to the other church, you know? We want to go to Camp United because there's some other new people. Or we want to go online and because there's, there's that one guy or that one girl, that perfect girl, because... I know all these people. I know Joe. I know Schmo. You know, I know all these people. And I don't know Schmo. Who's that? <laughs> you don't need to know Schmo. Uh, you know, you know all these people, and it feels ordinary, and there's not that little spark, and you're chasing that spark. Well, guess what? It doesn't matter who you marry. That spark will go away, and it will be plain old Schmo, and you're going to be married to him, and you're going to have to find a way to figure it out. It, the grass is always greener on the other side until you get there. And then once you get there, one, it's not one grass. One more thing, in that case, it's like, you know, when you're dating somebody, not what I describe, but what you guys describe, yeah. I mean, it's like you fantasize somebody on exactly. the other line that you want to marry. But they're not that person. That's, but it's not. You creating that person. You Be careful. You're creating someone that you want to mar be married to, but it's not. It's totally different. It's a good thing when you know a person, when you know each other. It's mm -hmm. a really good thing. I don't know. Maybe I'm going to be wrong, but for me, for me, if you're looking for a wife or husband through internet, guys, something wrong with you. <laughs> something not good. You have to check. Because why? God gave you this gift to talk, to see, to hear, and you're just typing looking for your wife or husband something wrong guys don't do that uh, for sure i was i was married like my wife she grew up here she, she was born here in the u.s and i live all my life in russia we was having this time uh like when we were separated but i i met her before i knew who she is and i loved her not through the pictures on the facebook and then yeah there was like a year of typing and you know skyping and I hate this time, guys. It's, it's really hard. So don't do that. <laughs> You're typing and Skyping. <laughs> I love it. Um, OK. So again, just to recap, question your motives. And, and the other question is, how old are you? you know? Because if you're not old enough to even start pursuing marriage, then you shouldn't be doing online dating and chatting with babes online then all day, right? I guess you could say it's pretty serious. You, you, you don't want to go there. Uh, uh, let me 
Sí. How do you know she is the one? I'm going to leave it to these guys. The angels will show you that. <laughs> she got it right. Choir from heaven. Guys, I think... Hallelujah. I think what, um, when I started dating uh, Vera, and I, um, I have a brain that tries to analyze everything, and I was like thinking, like, okay, how do I know? Like, is she the one? Like, is this going to work out? Is this from God? Is this good? Literally, my brain went crazy trying to analyze all the different relationships that I knew in my life. Literally, like all the good ones, all the bad ones, like all these people, how they met, how do they do it, blah, 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 like all the different factors. And I was just, I was analyzing it and I was going crazy, you know, because one guy just like prayed about it, did it, the other guy had a vision, you know, the other one, you know, girl came into his life and just, I mean, so many different ways. And I was trying to narrow down, like, what is the secret sauce? You know, what is, what is that thing that's going to confirm for me that, you know, she's the one and this is the right thing? Literally almost went crazy. Um, and what I realized, what God opened to me in that moment is that everybody has their own story. Everybody has their own story in terms of how they come to Christ. And every marriage has its own story. It could be, you know, the guy, you know, they met and they fell in love the first, you know, the guy, they fell in love right away and they knew they were supposed to get married and they got married. Another one, it could be the girl did not want to marry him, but he kept pursuing her and they ended up getting married. You know, so it's just so many different stories of how it works and how it happened. Um, personally, in, if I look in scriptures, I do not see evidence of the one. There's no such thing as the one. That, that's a lie. There's, there's anyone that, if you're a guy, any girl that is born again, she is, and she's single, she's the one. Like, she could be the one for you. She legitimately, 100% could be the one. The God's will is do not be yoked to an unbeliever. Do not marry an unbeliever. As long as the person is a believer, it's God's will for you to marry that person. Like, it's that simple. And I have to choose only one. Yeah, you need to choose one. Yeah, that's the hard part, right? But uh, my point is love is not something that you fall into. You know, you fell into love. Oh, like falling. And break, break the leg or something. What? Yeah, break your leg. You know, you're going to have a bad life. Uh, if you, falling is, has, is a, uh, you know, nobody falls intentionally. Everybody falls because it's an accident. That's why I don't like this language of fall in love because it makes it seem like it's an accident. He walked into the store where I was working and la la la, you know, you, have, you fall in love. No, that's not how it works. Love, love is a command. Love is an action of the will. Love is a choice that we make. I have decided to love my wife ever since I started dating her and up to this day, every day, I wake up and I decide to love her. And today, I love her more than I have ever loved her in my life, even when I was, you know, telling her I do. I love her so much more. Love is a choice that you make. And literally, guys, literally, like, let's say, let's say we were to do this. Get all the, the, the guys on this side, all the girls on this side, assuming everyone's born again. Everybody close their eyes. They walk. They meet up, right? And, and whoever they meet, that's who they marry. If the Spirit of God is in both of them, that will be a good marriage. God will figure it out. God will provide it as long as both people commit to loving one another and choose to love one another every single day. Period. Uh, this is in our plans for the future, so we'll yeah. wait a little it's bit. It's the grand finale. So, uh, In my experience, uh, honestly, this mentality about like there's... Somewhere in this earth, the only one is walking somewhere. You have to have <laughs> some kind sleeping. of like wife finder tool or something, and you're looking, oh, beep, 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 this one. <laughs> no, it's wrong, guys. It's wrong. And um, girls, if you see a guy with a metal detector, run. <laughs> yeah. No, no. Um, for me, that was uh, straight up my choice, like Peter said. Uh, because for me, the main thing when I was looking at the girl uh, is a Christianity. I want 
um, I was looking for a girl who was Christian. And honestly, in my mind, there was two girls that I was choosing between. Yeah, only two. No more Christians. <laughs> so, and um, God just gave me that, that peace and everything. I don't think um, there is some kind of structure that you can follow. It's case by case, like Peter says, and um, you have to trust God with that. You have to just give him everything. Uh, there, is no, there is no perfect girl. There is no perfect guy. You're looking for, oh, something. Oh, yeah, he's cool, but something. Oh, why are you doing this? I don't like it. Oh, I'm going to look for another one. And, you know, you're going to go like, in looking for the perfect girl for forever. Forever. That's why they're not married. Yeah, that's why I have my friends like 40 years and they like, oh, you know, all girls like, you mm, know, there's something wrong with them. And I'm telling, no, something wrong with you because you're always looking for a perfect woman. Um, this is a challenge for you. So my wife, I, she had everything what I need. She was Christian. I like her like look. And uh, that's basically, that's it, the long hair. That's all what I need. And um, everything else w wasn't that important for me. I knew that I can, I can uh, do everything else. So I will lead her and she will follow me like I tell her and everything. Because I knew that she's Christian. And just uh, for sure God was creating us with our, our um, uh, how is it? Uh, imagination. imagination of something good. So for, for me, my wife is the most beautiful girl. For him, his wife. And everybody has different opinion on that. Um, what I want to say, uh, just don't think that there's somebody watching strashny hold it, and this is your wife, and you're scared about it. That's what I was thinking when I was growing. I was thinking, oh, what if my wife, not beautiful, I was thinking, what if, what if she's like, I don't know, tall, taller than me? You know? And then I realized that God just want me to choose whatever I like and ask for his blessing. Ask for my parents' blessing, for God's blessing. If God bless me, that's, that's what he wanted me to do. Uh, well, um, I think the person that who said, I do, that's the one for you. Uh, what I'm trying to say is, you are looking for it, the girl, and you ask her to get married, that's the one for you who said, I do, I like you, I want to be with you. That's the one for you for sure, but the thing is, there's uh, so many stories. I, you know, people saying that, hey, when I met this person, I felt so right. I felt so good. And I felt that this is my half. In a year, they split up. What happened? Where is that feeling go? Like Peter said, love. What is love is? Is it feeling that you have to hurt that person? No, not. It's not. Every day, you wake up in the morning, you feel differently. Every day in the morning I wake up, especially on Monday morning, I don't want to do anything. I don't want to go anywhere. But I have to get up, dress up, and go to work. Same way as relationship between you and your wife. You, like Peter says, you choose. When she said, I do, that means this person is belong to me and I belong to that person. Whatever happened, I will work it out with God's help. With God's help. Because when we rely on this kind of feelings and all, all kinds of other stuff, beauty, beauty will fade away for sure. You know that. You know that for a fact. When you were a baby, you were different than now. We, in, in 40 years, it will be completely different. So don't rely on these feelings that, oh, yes, this is the one. No, uh, first and foremost, what the first commandment? Love your God with all your what heart or your mind, basically with everything. And then second, 
love your neighbor. It doesn't mean just neighbor right there, right there. Wife is the first neighbor and kids and everybody else. So that's the principle you should follow. You just stole my thing. I have it literally opened up to that passage right there. I, you know, I look. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I agree with all these guys. There's not the one. There's so many different stories, so many different ways of us seeing her in a dream, and we knew each other for three can, weeks. Can I just, about dreams, please. <laughs> if somebody knocked on your door and said that I dream, dreamed about you this night, Cl shut the door, not to close the door. Shut the door, lock all the locks, and just go. Yeah, guys, I have some weird dreams. <laughs> and I thank God that they're not like little prophecies. Believe me. So, and if, sorry, I were to, sorry, if I were to follow them, Sleeping I mean. Sleeping too much, guys. Why? Please. I don't have any dreams about it. <laughs> yeah, so don't follow. If someone says they have a dream about you, you don't know them at all, run. That's all given. But in reality, as long as that person loves God with all they are, and they love others with all they are, like themselves, you guys can work it out. And as long as you have that same thing in you too, if you don't love God or love others also, it's not going to work out. But if both of you guys love God and both of you have love for just the community, I think it can work out. Yep. Uh, today, guys want to hang out to get to know a person with these hangouts how long before a girl can expect something more stable or figure out that he's planning on only hanging out forever. So, guy is hanging out with a girl and it's just a hangout and it's a hangout and the girl's wondering, where is this going? How long should I wait until, like, something's gonna happen? Uh, I think the answer to that is, uh, on, if I were a girl, <laughs> Uh, I've, you know, I've a couple of times, and there, there should be something, there should be something more clear, at least. I mean, the first time I talked to my wife, like, I just called her, I'm like, hey, can you talk? And she's like, yeah, sure, what's up? And uh, we probably talked, like, twice before that, and I'm like, hey, uh, I'm kind of interested in you, what if, we, what if you say we meet up and get to know each other for a little more? I know that's a little fast, um, I mean, it worked. But I think there has to be a, a little bit of, there has to be like that disclosure, hey, this is more than a hangout, I'm interested in you, I wanna pursue you, and I think uh, it has to be, you know, soon that it's clear, hey, this is for marriage. This is not just fun, this is for marriage. And that has to be pretty clear, I would say, from, from very early in the beginning. Yeah, for me, from my experience as well, I was telling my wife when, when I first time seeing her, like, we met a missionary trip, Russia, and then I just see her two times before I tell her that. Just see her two times in my life for a week, and I decided to marry her. I came to U.S. for that, and find her house. Hey, let's Knock go. I window. want to talk to you. Stalker. I want to talk to you. And she's like, okay, where? I'm like, whatever. I didn't, Sacramento, just right now, I realized that we was a, a river walk. I wasn't knew that, like, just, I asked my cousin, hey, show me some place. I want to go somewhere. I don't know. And he just sent me the link, the pic on the map. <laughs> I just, and I tell her, hey, you know what? I came here from Russia. I want to marry you. And, uh, I wasn't making it clear from like first, first time. I think that's right because um, after that, I was telling her, hey, if you will say me yes, like you want to pray about it, you want to think about it, take whatever time you need, but I'm going to, I'm serious about you and I want to tell you that if you're going to tell, if you said me yes, I will lead this uh, relationship to, to the marriage. And uh, if somebody just hang out with you, ask this dude, hey, what do you want from me? Like, what are you doing? Seriously. Ask him because some boys, they, they, they want to hang out, but they don't know what they want. So just ask them if they, if they don't know what they want, then they will go to know what they want, then they will come. No, ser seriously, if it's just a, a hangout and he's not sure about it, I would move on because... He's not sure about it. He's, he's not initiating. He's not overcoming his own fears of, of just being a man, right? 
Uh, and I think this also leads to another question is, how do you know the relationship is serious and they are serious about you? Again, I think it starts with the first commandment. Is the person serious about God? Are they serious about God? If they are serious about God and they're in a relationship with you, then they're probably serious about you as well. Because as Christians, there, you know, there's no concept of dating in the Bible. There's no concept. It's either you're on the path to marriage with a person or you're not on the path to marriage and you don't have a relationship. There's no such thing as like, hey, for fun or... No, that's all bogus. It's either you're on the path to marriage or you're not on the path to marriage and you're not with a person. It's black and white. And if the person is not serious about God and, and you see that, hey, get out of that as soon as you can. As soon as you can. Yeah, I mean, if you see, like, I agree what they're saying. If you see the problem, that it doesn't lead you anywhere, but just the hangouts and just nothing else, uh, this, pro this guy probably not serious about the marriage at all. He's probably more serious about your look, about physical appearance, and all that kind of stuff. So usually, like Peter said, if he believes in God, with all his heart and love him with all his heart, the first thing he knows, he should understand one thing, that if he is with the girl, she expects something from him. He understand that. If he doesn't understand that, ask him like, Slabodenka сказал, ask him what's wrong with you? <laughs> what do you need? <laughs> what do you need? Where, we, where this going? And uh, see, see it's, it's actually, we, we are not animals. We are human beings. God gives us, uh, uh, you know, intellect. We can talk. We can, you know, discuss and see where this lead. If it doesn't lead anywhere, it should be just disassemble. <laughs> that relationship it doesn't go anywhere. Yeah. Um, just being brutally honest also, if a guy just wants to hang out and he says, let's just hang out over and over again, He's not ready for marriage, or he's not serious about you, or um, just he's not worth your time. Um, before I repented, that was my favorite. Just, hey, let's go hang out, and we just go hang out and stuff, and I was never actually serious about it. But if a guy is serious about marriage, if he's serious about wanting to get married and wanting it to be serious, he'll know in his head, and he'll be able to, to tell you that he's serious. Now you know for sure if Khan wants to hang out with you. <laughs> He's serious. <laughs> um, <laughs> yep, you exposed this. Uh, so uh, another question, and we're going to wrap up in about five minutes, is how do you glorify God through your relationship? You know, for me, that was something simple. But for my wife, there was like, whole deal because we um, when we start to like I don't want to use this word dating um, meeting up <laughs> hanging whatever. out yeah so um, she was telling me yes I want to uh, think about it and pray about it and we was we were having peace about it and okay I, I was telling her let's go to read the Bible together just uh, be together and we was doing that at, you know, the White House. There's a lot of Russians. A lot of Russians. For me... In White House? Like, <laughs> you know, this uh, capital. park, capital or whatever. And for me, there was something... I've never been in Sacramento. Like, whatever, let's read here. And she's like, no, here's a lot of Russians. Here's a lot of people. And she's, she was scared about everybody. Um, but for me, um, that was... Something simple, easy, just to read together and um, pray together. So first of all, well, you should start with glorifying God through your clear, pure relationship. That's for sure. Uh, that's what you have to, what have to have, uh, you need to have in your relationship. The purity, this is the first thing what will glorify God. Well, um, to me, glorifying God in marriage is like this. First, when you 
get together and you decided to get married. Um, you're, first of all, he's a boy, you're the girl. You're completely different. And she grew up in this family, you grew up in that family. It's already another thing, another point. You completely, two completely different person just combine and start living. Nothing is working out right away. It's just, it's everything is like against your will and against her will. If you think your siblings drive you crazy, yes. wait until you start living with someone who has completely different habits. <laughs> it's, it's just you thinking this way, she's thinking this way. And when you guys get together and you start arguments and all other stuff, you say, why she doesn't understand me? She thinks the same way, why he doesn't understand me? And see, in the, in the thing is, relationship between, uh, Christian relationship between uh, husband and wife glorifying is when we, in, uh, in this path, working things out. Working things out and praying to God that we work things out. And when we start kind of walking together in that path together and start understanding each other more and more as a husband and wife and working together toward one goal, that become itself glorifying in God himself because he actually working in you, in your family. In you, it's, it's my experience personally, my experience. I see God's working in me. First of all, let, let me tell you one thing. When uh, you guys get married, God, in, in Genesis it says God give uh, Adam helper, right? I see in relationship helper not just help, helping me building something. No, it helping me see who I am. See what's wrong with me. That person is showing me this is and this is and this is it's wrong with you. Not just verbally, but just when I see that this, you know. Different behaviors. Different behaviors, different everything, different attitudes. When I see that and I see myself that I am I, what I didn't see in me. So the relationship, and then when relations stop kind of straightening things out and you kind of work and you start understanding your wife and wife start understanding you so it's kind of like god the son and god the holy spirit working together the same way wife and husband working together to the same goal that's the glorifying god yeah um i guess just a short little wrap up of everything that they said because i'm just going to be recapping what they said um we're made as um, beings that need to be in community. We love fellowship. And um, in Genesis chapter 2, 18, it says that uh, it is not good for man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. It's not good for us to be our, ourselves. And the way that you glorify God through your marriage is the way, same way that you glorify God through work and everything else. It's through your everyday actions. It's by loving on one another. It's by helping each other grow. It's by loving on other people um, and being an example to others that maybe aren't married or other couples or whoever else. It's just in your day-to-day -day actions. It's not one specific thing. And through that, you'll actually see your relationship grow um, with each other as well. I think uh, this question is interesting because how do you glorify God through your relationship? Well, the, the first thing that you need to ask is, are you glorifying God in your singleness and in your own life, right? That, that's, that's the real question, that, that first, are you loving God with all your heart? Or are you saying, okay, I got this relationship, how do I fit God into the picture, right? You're not starting with God, you're starting with the relationship, and if you're doing that and then asking, okay, well, well, how do I add God onto this? How do I glorify God? Because, hey, you guys sold me on this God thing. It's really cool. I want to add some, I want to sprinkle some God into my relationship. How do I do that? If you're doing that, it's completely wrong. And you need to, you need to go back. And it, it might mean that you need to break that relationship off if you didn't start it for the glory of God to begin with. It's like saying, imagine you know stealing is wrong, right? But you steal a car and you're like, well... I already got it. God, how do I glorify you with this car, you know? 
And the answer is go return the car back into the parking lot. You know, go give it back, repent of what you did, and start fresh. Earn some money and then go buy the car, right? And, but if you started it wrong already, if the relationship, you didn't start it with God, well, you know, and of course God can redeem things and everything, but if you're just trying to add God into, into the mix, if you're just trying to sprinkle some God in there, that it's not going to work out. But if it truly is, you are glorifying God in your day-to-day life. She's glorifying God. You guys are both born again. You guys come together. You're pure, and you get married. It's really simple. How do you glorify God? You stay pure and faithful to one another. You love one another every single day. The husband sacrifices for the wife. The wife, the wife submits to the husband. And just you do that every single day for the rest of your life, and you glorify God. I mean, the commands in, in the Bible are very simple yeah, when it comes to this. Just to that is, like Bible says, die for yourself. Yep. That's the marriage, basically. Yep. That's die for yourself every second. Uh, and last question, and um, I think this is a really good question. We kind of talked about it in the beginning, but it says, what factors push a guy to pursue a girl, right? Um, and I, I, I think the, the answer that we talked about, one, is it depends who the guy is, Right? Every guy, you know, if he's a Christian, he's going to be looking for one thing. He, one thing's going to be pushing him to pursue a girl. Uh, if he's not a Christian, something else is going to be uh, pushing him to pursue a girl. Girls, I just want to tell you, the bait that you throw out is the fish that you're going to catch. The, the, the point that, the thing that you're selling yourself at, right? We're always selling ourselves, so to speak. I know no one likes that word selling, but uh, we're, we're, we're selling ourselves, right? If you're selling yourself, if you're throwing out the bait of like, oh, look how great looks, uh, how popular I am or how, you know, great my looks are, if that's what you're selling, well, that's the kind of buyer you're going to get. You're going to get a guy that only cares about your looks, and when that's gone, he might be gone, right? I'm not saying don't take care of yourself. That's not what I'm saying. Uh, Take care of yourself. Do all those things. Those things are good, um, but it, whatever, you're, whatever you bait you're casting is the fish that you'll catch. And my recommendation to you is love the Lord your God with all your heart. Just let that be the number one thing in your life. And you will attract a man who loves God. And that, that's, the, that's the best kind of man that you can attract for yourself. So I don't know if you guys have anything else. I, I just want to... Uh, add one thing, but uh, that's all, that's what he said is 100% right. And one thing I just want to um, add to everything. It's like um, I, I'm I'm just hoping that you guys asking this question not because to find like a little loop, you know, what I can do for my fleshly desires, but you honestly asking these questions to see what the scripture telling us or what we experience as a, a Christian. So I'm really hoping that you uh, uh, looking for the answer, the right answers to follow that. Amen. Uh, as we call the band up, Paul, can you, can you close us in prayer? Мой небесный отец, благодарность тебе и слава тебе за твою прекрасную любовь. Иисус Христос, когда ты был на этой земле, подошли к тебе и спросили, какие две, какая как самая главная commandment? И ты сказал, самое великое и самое первое, возлюби Господа твоего всем сердцем и тве, всем разумением твоим. Вторая подобна ей, возлюби ближнего твоего, как самого себя. Боже милосердный, помоги нам так жить, так жить, чтобы на самом деле вот эти две заповеди были в нас и через нас действовали. Иисус Христос, благослови всех, кто задавал вопросы. Я надеюсь, что мы ответили им, и что они будут действовать по Твоим, Господи, путям. Благослови, чтобы каждый из присутствующих здесь вникал в себя и в учение, в Слово Твое. Господи, благослови каждого присутствующего, чтобы они вникали в Слово Твое и занимались этим постоянно. Они найдут много ответов в Слове Твоем, Господь милосердный. Ты им покажешь, как жить. Благослови их. 
Господи, если Дух Святой не будет присутствовать с человеком, какие бы мы ответы ни давали, этот человек потеряется. Господь милосердный, храни нас Духом Твоим Святым. Иисус Христос, Папочка, прибудь с нами, дай нам мудрости жить на этой земле. Женаты ли мы или не женаты? По Твоим словам, наш Бог, Отец, Сынух Святой. Аминь. Amen.